coaches, thanks for checking out the presentation today. My name is Jimmy Flynn. I'm the special teams and wide receivers coach at St. Xavier University in Chicago, Illinois. My email address is jflynn at sxu.edu, and my Twitter handle is at jflynniii. Uh, today's presentation, we're going to go over developing goals, core beliefs, and a practice system within the kicking game. Um, I think it's, a, it's an area of, of the game that we spend a ton of time on at St. Xavier University, and, uh, and Coach was, was kind enough to ask me to come on and, and, and speak to, to you guys, so I'm uh, very fortunate to have the opportunity to do this. Um, and, and before I get started with the presentation, if there are any coaches who have high school kids looking to play football at the next level, please reach out to me. Um, I would love the opportunity to, uh, to evaluate uh, your players and, and talk with you guys about players that you think could help our, our football program win games, okay? Um, again, we, we are in, in Chicago, Illinois, uh, at St. Xavier University. Uh, we're an NAIA institution, and uh, we've had a lot of success over the last 20 years at St. Xavier. So uh, we'd love to, uh, to get some of your players. All right, now with that being said, let's get started with the presentation. Okay, so I'm going to start today just talking about the purpose of special teams. All right, I think a lot of times people focus on improving field position. I, that's definitely an important characteristic. But number one, first and foremost, we always try to score the football. Okay, so, uh, so I always, on kickoff return, on punt pressure, on field goal, it doesn't matter what the segment is. Our number one goal is to score the football. So uh, that's what we're looking to do. The second thing is we're looking to take the football back. All right, so whether it's, whether it's uh, through a, a, a strip, a punch in the ball out, um, a, a, a vice tackle of some sort uh, where, where, we, where we induce a fumble, uh, we're always looking to get the ball back. All right. And then, uh, and then the third thing is, is we're looking to improve field position. All right. Drive start is the most important statistic in, in special teams. So whether it's kickoff return or punt return, where do I start with the football? That's the most important thing. Okay. Uh, your chance of scoring goes up exponentially the closer you start to, to your goal line. So wherever your drive start is, the closer you get to your goal line, the higher the, 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 the potential uh, you have of scoring. So if you start between the goal line and the 20, so you have an 80 to 100 yard field, you're only gonna score one out of 30 times, all right? Getting the ball past the 20 increases your odds to one out of eight times. Getting the ball to midfield or beyond, now you have a one out of three shot of scoring, okay? And so I show the kids this on the first day and they look at it and say, well, wow, you know, so our goal all right, is drive start. Okay, if we beat the other team in drive start, there's a chance that we're going to score more than them. Okay, um, at St. Xavier, I have a little creed, all right, and we'll do this before special teams meetings. Okay, it kind of has all of our core beliefs, all right. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm huge with being a team firster, okay, and what that means is you always put the team first. You're gonna have you're gonna have to do a lot of things that the general population doesn't have to do, and when I say general population, I mean the guys who are not on special teams. Um, you're gonna have to come early. You're gonna have to stay late. Uh, you're gonna have to watch extra film on Mondays, um, and just the the practice time and the meeting time that goes into being on special teams um, means you have to be a team firster. If you're not playing on special teams, it isn't for you. Um, the second thing is, uh, they actually the second and third thing they go hand in hand. All right, I tell my guys all the time, there's two things that I ask of you. Number one, have a positive attitude. Okay, a lot can be accomplished if you have a positive attitude, all right, and, and, and if, it, if it's adversity or if it's coaches asking you to do something, uh, regardless of what it is, if, if you have a positive attitude, uh, good things are going to come your way. All right, the next thing that goes hand in hand with having a positive attitude is, is giving 100% effort. Okay, and so when, when I say giving 100% effort, I mean in practice, in the meeting room, um, in, in uh, watching films, during games. All right, and so those three core values we kind of put together into a, uh, into a special teams creed. Okay, uh, and the creed is this, we are Cougar specialists. We take great pride in special teams. We have a big play mentality. We aim to score and create turnovers on every play. We are technique masters who understand time and space. We exhibit leadership in meetings. We give max effort in practice, and we execute on game day. 
We understand special situations. We prepare like champions. We are team firsters. So I kind of put together everything that, that, that I believe in and, and things that the kids exhibit into a creed, okay? And then at the bottom, I put the rule of the final inch because so much comes down on, on special teams to, if you take one step uh, lazily, or if you're not focused for one second, all right, you'll, you'll be so close to making the play and, and you just won't make the play. So the rule of the final inch is that the work has almost been completed, the goal almost attained, but the quality of the work is not right. In that moment of fatigue and self-satisfaction, it's tempting to leave the work without finishing the final inch. In fact, the rule of the final inch consists in this, not to shrink the, this critical work, not to mind the time spent on it, knowing that one's purpose lies not in completing things faster, but in the attainment of perfection upon completion. So I always tell the kids, if we're rushing a punt, guys, you're generally gonna get one shot at it. Your get off has to be great. You gotta defeat the initial block, or you have to take great angles. You gotta shoot your hands, you gotta seal the deal. All right, and, and so everything that we do in practice, in the meeting room and walkthroughs, it comes down to the, to the final inch. And when the game's on the line, we have to make sure that we're able to make that play, okay? And I think doing something like this with special teams kind of sets a tone, and I, and I always refer back to it, all right? I'm constantly referring back to it, and the kids know, to me, how important it is, all right? Uh, the next thing I wanna go over is kind of the foundation. It, it connects to my core beliefs, all right? But this is more like, if you wanna be good on special teams, what do you need to do like as a program? The first thing is you have to use talent on special teams. Blocking a punt, catching a punt, returning a kick, kicking a football, those are some of the most unique skills uh, that, that any football player has. And if you're not using talent, and you're saying, well, I'm gonna use a backup here, or I'm gonna use you know, Johnny, because Johnny, you know, he's not going both ways and you know, uh, uh, so he ain't gonna play any special teams because he plays too many offense and defensive plays. If you do that, you're sacrificing the, the, the three goals, okay, which we went over before. N number one goal is to score the football. Number two is to create turnovers. And number three is field position. And if you believe that those three things matter, then you have to use talent, okay? The next thing uh, that's really important is to set aside serious time for special teams, all right? And, and, and we we'll kind of get into what that means here in a little while. Um, but setting aside serious time, and when you, when you practice it, every day you need to practice holds, snaps, kicks, returns, and blocks, at least three days a week, okay? So, so we're practicing our returns and our kicks and our snaps and our holds at least three days a week. Um, when we actually practice special teams, we do very little teamwork. Most of the stuff we do is we break up into groups and we do a ton of drill work that is technique specific and, 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 and it correlates with our scheme. Okay, so our focus is on technique. Uh, we will at the very end of every segment, we'll do like two or three live team reps. And when I say live, everything is live except the tackle on the returner. All right, I don't wanna hurt the returner. I don't want anyone to get hurt, but we go live to the returner then we two hand touch off on him, but all the blocks, full speed, and, but we're only doing two to three live team reps. The rest of it is all is all position specific technique and drills that correlate with our scheme. Okay. Uh, the third thing is we we need to prepare our kids for special situations. So if you block the punt and it goes forward, you block it, it goes backwards. Um, uh, return after a safety. Um, all the little things that go into uh, to to being a, a great situational football player you need to go over with them, okay? Um, fourth, we're gonna look at our schemes and we're gonna make sure that our kids know exactly what they're doing, all right? I always say keep your schemes simple yet diverse. The best way to put this is you have to be able to attack a team from the right, from the left, and from the middle. So whether you're kicking field goals, you gotta kick them from the right hash, the left hash, or the middle. If you're blocking a punt, you gotta come off the punt team's right side, left side, and middle, all right? And, uh, and the same thing for kickoff return. You gotta be able to return it right, left, and middle. I believe that if you do that and you keep your scheme simple, yet diverse, so you have the ability to attack a team uh, from all angles, you'll be successful. And then the fifth thing is, um, we focus on our player's technique. You win because of elite and consistent technique, not scheme. All right, I think a lot of young coaches uh, try to out-scheme people. Okay, and, and, and I think that a lot of great coaches, they, they out-technique people, they out-drill people. 
Um, and when you, when you run drills and you focus on technique, uh, you, you set yourself up for being a lot more successful than someone who just tries to out scheme someone. And I think that takes years of, of practice and years of like of hard work and dedication to learn those drills and learn the technique and how it correlates with the scheme. But we focus on technique. Coach, you're going to have to give me a two-minute break. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, guys, the, the fundamental purpose of the foundation, all right, is to set your kids up to be successful, all right? And so to summarize this slide, basically, you have to use talent on special teams. You have to set aside serious time for preparation, which means we're focusing on drill work and technique. Um, we're going to prepare our kids for those special situations. We're going to keep our schemes simple yet diverse. We're going to be able to attack them right, left, and middle. All right, and then again, we're going to focus on technique. At the bottom of the screen here, we have the pyramid of success from John Wooden. All right, and I kind of, when I go back to like, hey, why, why are our practices not going well? Or, hey, this drill wasn't looking good. Or maybe, hey, we've been struggling kind of in a lull for a couple of weeks. I go back to this and I look at, I look at the, the building blocks on the bottom. Okay, industriousness. Okay, uh, there's no substitute for hard work. All right, friendship, loyalty, cooperation, and enthusiasm. All right, and I try to make sure that, number one, I try to make sure that I work hard. All right, and I want the kids to see it. I want the kids to know it. I try to develop relationships with the kids. I want to let them know that I'm there for them. Um, same thing with the coaches. All right, loyalty is huge. I tell the kids all the time, you may not understand why we do something. Just trust that what we're doing is gonna put you in the best position to win. All right, uh, cooperation. Sometimes things don't go well. All right, sometimes players, you know, they, they may do little things that to, to tick you off or let you down, but we have to learn how to cooperate. And then also we have to be enthusiastic. All right, without the bottom building blocks, there's no way to get to the next level, which is self-control, alertness, initiative, and intentness. Okay, so you have to focus on the building blocks on the bottom in order to get to the top one, which is competitive greatness. Okay, um, and so I really focus on this. And when I try to determine personnel for special teams, a lot of this matters because kids who don't work hard, kids who don't develop good relationships and who aren't loyal, who, who aren't enthusiastic, they don't wanna do those extra things. They don't wanna spend an extra 30 minutes a day in the meeting room or, or on the field, okay, practicing, all right? And so I really focus on that, on that bottom rung of, of the pyramid of success. Okay, there are some elements that I believe are vital to any program. Number one, the head coach must be committed. He must be invested, which means in, in, in your uh, Monday meeting uh, or the meeting you have to recap the, the game, one of the first things uh, that your head coach has to talk about is special teams, okay? Um, in addition to that, the head coach has to understand, you know, that, that whoever's in charge of special teams um, that coach is important, all right? So, you know, he may ask for things or need things such as time, players, money, resources. And the head coach has to be willing to, to support that special teams coach, okay? So first and foremost, if the head coach is invested, I think the, the rest of the team, the players, and the other coaches will be invested as well. Um, next, I, I really believe in this. One person must be the special teams coordinator, Okay. He's going to decide the technique, the schemes, the drills, the meeting times. He's going to decide all of that stuff. Um, if you have multiple people doing it, I think it sends a bad message to the kids that, you know, because one coach may, he may, he may have run more full team stuff, full speed, full field stuff. Another coach, he may do more close proximity stuff. It might be a little easier. Okay. Uh, the one coach may have more meeting time. The one coach may not meet at all. All right, and then it, it, it just, it sets a divide within the team, okay? If one guy's in charge, he's going to be, he's going to decide what all of those times are, techniques, schemes, drills, etc. okay? All assistant coaches have a stake in and a commitment to special teams. So when we practice this, coaches aren't, they're not throwing a ball and, and you know, just sitting, sitting down and talking. They're actually coaching special teams, Okay. And if they're not, we have, we have two or three coaches who don't coach special teams. They're doing individual stuff with the rest of the, the, the team, okay? But when we're doing special teams, we have about 80% of our staff coaching, okay? I always try to, uh, to split up whenever we're, whenever we're practicing special teams. So we'll very rarely do 11 on 11, 
okay? I'll split up into three groups and we're gonna work the position specific skills and drills that those kids need for, for the game, for their position. Okay, so I'm gonna send at least two coaches per group, okay? Um, and so, you know, if, if all you have are six coaches, then use three or four of them to split up uh, uh, when, when you practice special teams, <clears throat> all right? Uh, the next thing is <laughs> we usually teach hold apart. All right, so we'll start the year uh, doing more team than we do the whole rest of the year. And it's just so I want the kids to understand the big picture. Like here's where we align. Uh, here's the, here's, here's the, the cadence or here's where we're dropping to. Um, and so I want them to understand the big picture and then we do the drills. Okay. And then we go back and we do a little bit of team then we do the drills. Okay. Uh, so we really teach hold apart. Players and coaches must understand the stopwatch. One way that you can ensure that the players and the coaches understand the stopwatch is have them grade the film themselves. I'll show you guys a grading form that, uh, that I got from a, a, a very close friend, coach of mine. Um, and, and when you have the kickers and the punters and the snappers grade their own film, they start to understand how timing affects special teams. If you simply tell them, it kind of goes through one ear and out the other. Um, but if you actually have them grade the film, they'll, they'll learn really quickly how important timing is. Um, Next, we incorporate a system of evaluation. So we do weekly awards and seasonal awards. That'll be later on. Um, this is an awesome way to motivate the kids, but I'll go over that in a little while. Um, I always tell people, special teams is hard coaching. All right, no one on, no coach on your staff will have a better, um, a better grasp of all the players and what they can do athletically than your special teams coach. All right, because he has to be able to evaluate and coach throwing, kicking, punting, snapping, returning, blocking, tackling, all right, uh, he, uh, he, uh, leverage, angles. He, he has to teach everything, okay? And so uh, it is hard coaching, and that's why you need multiple coaches to help out, all right? I always say this, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. We have to work as a unit. The coaches have to work together. The players have to work together. Um, and then in the segment, uh, they have to understand what the relationship is between them and, and the person next to them or them and the three people on their side, okay? So they have to understand the way the unit works as a whole, and then, and then they have to take care of their individual responsibility, okay? Uh, special teams is an extension of the offense and the defense. I kind of went over that. It's returning, tackling, blocking, throwing, rushing, catching. So those coaches, they have to be able to teach all those different aspects of the game, all right? Uh, another element that's really important is we'll limit kicking to three to four days a week with a maximum of 50 ball strikes per day, and that includes drills. Okay, now live kicks, it's 12 kickoffs, 20 punts, 20 field goals max per day. All right, and so that's what we limit our kickers to and punters. All right, now say they do 20 punts, they have 30 other ball strikes, and those will all be drill, ball strike drills. So, um so that's kind of something we live by so we don't overkick our guys, all right? Uh, four days a week is kind of a lot. Uh, I think three days is a really good number. On that fourth day, it would probably be a light day for the kids, all right? We always practice without the ball, with yard markers, with hashes, and then sometimes we put the ball in there, okay? So you have to understand what is the function of your drill, okay? Sometimes you need a ball. Sometimes the ball uh, gets shanked to the left. Sometimes the guy drops it and ruins the rep. All right, so do you really need the ball to work on what it is that you're working on? Do you need a ball in the air to work on holdups for punt? Okay, it's a question you ask, you have to ask yourself. Are you working the front end on the line of scrimmage? Are you working the back end where the ball is? So sometimes you're going to practice without the ball. Take the ball out of it, and then it's not going to go rolling around on you. The guy's not going to ruin the rep. All right now, if you need the ball, you put the ball in there. Okay, yard markers, hashes, goal posts. All that stuff's important because the kids have to understand the spacing and the timing and how it works together, all right? Here's what I tell kids and, and our players. When we do a walkthrough, that's to learn the scheme and big picture, all right? So like I said, early in the year, we might do more team, but it's generally just walkthrough, okay? They're going to learn the scheme and the big picture stuff. The full field drills are for timing and the close proximity drills or for technique, <laughs> all right? And so that's kind of something that I live by when I teach it. I'm thinking, what, am I, what is my focus for today? 
If, if I'm just working protection, okay, maybe I don't need a ball today. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm going to, you know, uh, do a walkthrough first. All right, or you know what? Maybe we're just going to go close proximity. Okay, all we're working is protection. So we're not going to work release or escapes. We're not going to work pursuit. We're not going to work tackling. All we're doing is working protection. So I kind of try to figure out what is it that I'm working on, and then I correlate, do, you know, do I need a walkthrough? Uh, do I need to do a full field drill? Uh, or am I going to do a close proximity drill? Okay. Um, am I going to do group work? Am I going to split up into three groups? Am I going to, am I going to do half line? So it's, there's a lot of different options. It's not, it, it's very rarely 11 on 11. And I can't preach that enough. Okay. Um, if, if 25% of your time is 11 on 11, 30% of your time, you're in a good spot. Okay. Um, if, if it's more then then I would challenge you to try to re rethink how you do it because I've had a lot of success on focusing on, on those on those drills and the technique. Okay, um, the something that's really important is to practice your backups. So when you create your your drills, all right, and your and your uh, team stuff at the end, always give your backups a rep or two. Okay, whether it's the snapper, the kicker, the punter, the holder. All right, the first team holder has to work with the second team kicker. The second team uh, holder works with the first team kicker. And the snapper is snapper as well. All right, it's it's vital to the success of your team. I always say this: you're one play away, all right, to being your second team guy, who's one play away to being your third team guy. All right, so you're always one snap away from someone getting hurt and being your next guy. So it's really important that you practice those guys. And then the last thing is time, distance, size, and speed is relative. The things that the guys do in the NFL at the Division One level, at the NAI level where I'm at, or in high school, all right, time, distance, size, and speed is relative. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, a lot of what we do, the NFL guys do, okay? A lot of what the NFL guys do, you guys can do in high school, okay? And, and I've coached high school football for many years, and, and I've also coached college now uh, for, for five years, okay? And so a lot of times I hear, well, we can't do that because that's what the – NFL guys do. That's what the Division One guys do, or you know they're in college, so we're in high school, so we can't do it. Um, and I, maybe I, I was of that mindset possibly um, years back. But the one thing that I've learned is is that what they do at that level and what we do at our level is pretty relative, all right, to your level. Okay, and yeah, there may be one or two small things, but for the most part, what what they do at their level. You guys can do it at your level, okay? And then we have our allotment of special teams. Our right, punt protection is the most important, followed by kickoff coverage, okay? You're giving them the ball, all right? And whenever you give someone the ball, bad things can happen. So, so those are the two most important ones. Punt pressure and kickoff return, we're getting the ball back, all right? So we work equal time on that. And then we have field goal, field goal block. It's not that we don't spend um, important work or time on field goal or field goal black, it's that it happens much quicker, okay? Um, and our kicker is only going to kick 15, you know, to 20 field goals, and it, it's going to be much quicker. So uh, we spend three to five minutes on field goal, on field goal. We spend three minutes on field goal black, and we're able to get a lot of reps in, okay? Team, together, everybody achieves more. Let's try to get the players, the coaches, everybody understand how important special teams is, and we all work together. Okay, I'm going to kind of go quickly through this, um, but, you know, I, I preach those three things. I preach have a positive attitude, give 100% effort, okay, um, and if you do those, those two especially, okay, if you do those two, it, it, you're going to set yourself up to, to, to be successful, and the third one is be a team firster, okay. If we can focus on those three, we're going to be in a really good spot, all right, but there are some other character traits, and one is attitude. One is concentration, all right, um, in the meeting room, on the field. Another is intensity. All right, if we're going to do something, we're going we're gonna to give 100% mental focus. And this intensity, it, you need to see it. You need to feel it, and you need to see it, okay? And that's what I tell the guys. If I don't feel it or see it, there's a problem, okay? And then the last thing is practice, okay? We have to practice. If you want your kids to be good at something, you have to practice it. If you don't drill something, you don't practice it, and the kid fails at it, then it's not on the kid, all right? And a, a coach I worked with for years always said to me, you have to know who to yell at and why you're yelling at him. And he has to know why he's being yelled at, okay? So if the kid doesn't know why he's being yelled at and you don't know, all right, it, which kid to yell at or why, 
it's, it comes down to technique and it comes down to, to drill work and practice. They need to know exactly what they need to do in every situation. And when they don't do it and you get on them, it's, it's fair. All right. Uh, but if the kid doesn't know because you haven't practiced it, it's difficult to get on them about it. I got this quote at the bottom uh, this year from a, a special teams coach. It's don't let winning make you soft. Don't let losing make you quit. And don't let your teammates down in any situation. All right. I thought this quote was kind, was kind of amazing. It goes back to the being a team firster thing. Okay. If you win, it's easy to take your foot off the throttle. Okay. And so it's important that you don't let winning make you soft. Okay. And when you lose or you're maybe you're not playing or you lose, you, you know, you, you've won two or three games. Okay. For, for the last three years, don't let losing make you quit. Okay. And then don't let your teammates down in any situation, whether it's socially, academically, or behaviorally. All right. And I really love this quote kind of encapsulates what it means to be a team firster. All right, we'll go to the next uh, slide here. All right, this is a, a mock per se practice schedule. We spend a ton of time on special teams. I'm not gonna go through everything. I'll just kind of highlight what we do. On Monday, we're gonna watch the game film and then preview the opponent. We're gonna have a field goal, field goal block meeting, and then we're gonna do a walkthrough, all right? Uh, that walkthrough is gonna allow us to install the game plan for the week, okay? Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're gonna do individual specials. You'll notice that it's a 10-minute segment, snappers, kickers, punters, holders, returners, three days a week. There's a coach with every group. So there's a coach with the returners, there's a coach with the punters, there's a coach with the kickers, the snappers, the holders. There's a coach with every single group, and, and we're working on technique and drills to get us better uh, for, for the game. Okay, so we have 10 minutes of individual specials. On Tuesday and on Wednesday and Thursday as well, we're going to do field goal. All right, so we're going to spend five minutes each of those days on field goal. All right, on Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to do punt protection and kickoff coverage. On Wednesday and Friday, we're going to do punt pressure and kickoff return. Okay, also on Friday, we're going to do field goal block versus scout. Okay, so that's kind of the way we break it down. Um, You'll notice that we also work hands team for five minutes. Five minutes, we work must onside for five minutes. Um, and so within a lot of these, we're doing, we also are practicing our special situations, okay? So try to steal time wherever, wherever available, but that's, that's our practice schedule. Saturday is our game day, obviously. And then Sunday we watch film and then finalize the game plan, okay? Um, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator. So I believe, in, I believe that, you know, when you're teaching someone something, you have to have a system for how you get your kids to understand uh, what it is that you're teaching them, all right? And so, so in my belief, everything starts in the meeting room, okay? So we're going to watch some film. I'm going to do these presentations for the kids. They're going to take notes. I'm going to use Screencastify. I'm going to send them videos and documents. I'm going to give them quizzes, okay? But everything starts in the meeting room. From there, it goes to the gym. You're in a controlled environment, all right? You're able to walk through stuff in a gym. It's not cold, it's not hot, it's not raining, and the kids are able to really focus. Then you go out to the field. There's landmarks, there's goalposts, hashes, yard markers, sidelines, end zones, all right? You're able to work with landmarks, doing your walkthrough. Okay, from there, then you do your full speed drills. You focus on technique, and that's 75% of the time. You can also, during your full speed drills, work on uh, uh, timing and spacing as well, okay? So it's a big thing a lot of people say, well, hey, how do the, the kids, they, they, don't, they don't understand the timing or the spacing if all you do are drills. Well, just create drills, some of them that are close proximity, and then some of them that work the timing and spacing necessary, okay, for that scheme, for that segment. All right, and then the final thing is, is team, big picture. How does everything, when you put it together, how does everything work together? Okay, and that's 25% of the practice time. Um, as all of you guys know, uh, not everybody learns the same, okay? It is proven, though, that more people learn from actually doing it than they do from hearing it, seeing it, or writing it. So, so that's why, you know, the kinesthetic part, actually doing the walkthrough in the gym, doing the walkthrough on the field, doing the drills, and doing the team, that's all kinesthetic stuff. Okay, there's also some, some visual stuff because they're going to see their teammates doing it. There's some auditory stuff. They're going to hear me say it, they're, and, and, and they're going to hear their, the, each other communicate with one another. 
all right? And then they're also going to read it and write it when they're, when they're in the meeting room, if they're going to do quizzes, uh, or if they're going to uh, uh, read the screen when I'm, when I'm doing a, a presentation, okay? And so I believe you have to kind of target all of these um, in order to get your kids to, to, to learn it. Because I, I've coached with some guys who say, well, you know what? We're not going to do much coaching on the field. We're just going to do all the coaching in the meeting room. All, all the coaching happens um, in the meeting room. Okay, that's fine. All right, but, but you're taking the kinesthetic portion away from it. All right, and, and all you're doing is you're just, you're talking at the kids. I think that learning, that's one great avenue to learn, but there's also three or four other ways that the kids uh, need to do it to learn. So players need to hear it, see it, write it, and then do it in order to understand, okay? Are your schemes not working? Are you, have, are you having reoccurring issues? Okay, if so, there's four questions as a coach I want you to ask yourself. Am I teaching the wrong thing to the wrong people? If I'm teaching the wrong thing to the wrong people, all right, I'm obviously setting my team up to not be successful, but we have to be honest and reflective in what we're doing. Okay, if something's not working, it's generally because it's the people or it's the thing that you're teaching them, okay? So that's the first thing that we, and once we, once we make sure, okay, hey, you know what? I'm teaching the right thing, then we move the, you know, or I'm teaching, I move to the next thing. Am I teaching the wrong thing to the right people? All right, well, these are my three best players and it's still not working. Okay, well, maybe, maybe it's time we change the technique or, or the scheme. Number three, am I teaching the right thing to the wrong people? Okay, so you've coached, you know it's the right thing, all right, but maybe, maybe the head coach isn't giving you the talent you need on special teams. Maybe the head coach is, is putting you know, the, the, the nice kids in there all right, instead of the kids who are, you know, can help your team win, all right? And so uh, it's important that we look at it from that perspective as well. And then what you're really hoping for is you're teaching the right thing to the right people, okay? The only way that you're able to diagnose any of this is if you're reflective and honest, all right? Because a lot of times, you know, people get stubborn and they don't want to change what they're doing because maybe they've always done it that way or maybe they've had success in the past, but you know, it's eight years later, 12 years later, and we've all, we've all been to blame for this, okay? And so the older that I get and the longer I coach, the more willing I am to change something, whether it's personnel, drills, technique, or scheme, if it's not working, okay? All right, so guys, I wanna thank all of you guys for, uh, for, for having me on. Um, my name is Jimmy Flynn. I'm at St. Xavier University in Chicago, Illinois. I coach the special teams and the wide receivers there, guys. Please reach out to me. It's jflynn at sxu.edu. I do these Zoom meetings all the time. I love talking special teams play. All right. Um, I also have a Twitter handle. It's at jflynnii. Um, anytime you guys have any questions or you want to you wanna talk ball, please reach out to me and I'll schedule a Zoom meeting. All right. Thanks, guys.